Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so today I thought we'd take a look at some brain teasers. Uh, these are pretty common in quant interviews and I think they're also pretty fun to solve. Um, and so we have four brain teasers lined up. Uh, three of them are gonna be pretty easy to solve, pretty fast. One of them is gonna require a bit more calculations or thinking, but yeah, let's just get started with the first one. So for the first question, we have two ropes, uh, each of which takes one hour to burn, um, but either rope has different densities at different points. So there's no guarantee of consistency in the time it takes the different sections within the rope to burn. So how do you use these two ropes to measure 45 minutes? Have a think and uh, I'll reveal the solution now. All right, so let's say these are our two ropes, one and two. So this question is actually pretty easy once you kind of know the trick. So the trick is that you can burn two ends of the rope at once. And once you do that, once you realize that is if you burn both these ends of the rope, well, wherever these two ends meet is going to be 30 minutes, right? Because even if like this part is really dense and this part isn't that dense, they're just going to meet further back, like further here instead of further here. Um, but in either case, it's just going to take 30 minutes to meet. Um, and so the strategy to do this is to burn both ends of one rope and one end of the second rope simultaneously. And so these two are going to meet somewhere in the middle. We, we don't know where, but in that time, 30 minutes is going to pass until those two meet. And meanwhile, this, this rope is going to burn, you know, somewhere up to here maybe. Um, and that also represents 30 minutes. And so once these two, these two ropes meet, um, we can just burn the end of the second rope, um, in which case these two are going to meet in 15 minutes. And so here we'll have our, our 45 minutes, um, which is what we wanted to sh uh, what we wanted to find was 45 minutes. All right. So for the second question, we again have a, a fun one. Um, basically, you want to send your colleague in a neighboring town an important document via messenger service, uh, which uses a padlock box. Unfortunately, the messenger service is not secure. So anything inside an unlocked box will be lost, including any locks you place inside the box during the delivery. Uh, the high security padlocks you and your colleague use have only one key, which the person placing the lock owns. So how can you securely send a document to your colleague? Uh, have a think about it and I'll reveal the solution now. Um, so let's say this is you and then this is your colleague. There we go. And the box will just represented by a box and then uh, you'll use your red lock and then your colleague can use a green lock. So the, the way to solve this is you put your document in, this, in, the, in the container in the box and place your lock on it as well. Uh, then you send it over to your colleague who puts on his lock as well. Um, so there's two locks on the box right now. It's doubly secure. Um, and so he sends it back, then you just remove your lock and uh, you send it back to him. He removes the lock and can look at the document inside. Uh, so it's a very simple solution that requires maybe some outside of the box thinking. All right, so for question three, uh, you're sitting at a round empty table with your opponent opposite you. You play the following game. You each take turns placing quarters on the table such that they don't touch any of the quarters already placed on the table. After a coin toss, it is decided that you get to place your coin first. Uh, so what strategy do you employ to make sure you win every time? Okay, so if you've had a thought about it, I'll go ahead and reveal the answer now. Um, so this is the table and then we'll draw you right here and then your opponent right here. And so let's also mark the center of this table. Um, now, your strategy is going to be to place the first coin right in the center of the table, right on that dot. And then for each coin that your opponent places, let's say your opponent places it right here, you're going to draw a line straight through the center of the table right here, and then place your coin right on the opposite side of it. And so for each coin your opponent places, you're just going to do the exact same thing. You're going to uh, draw a line straight through the center and then place your coin right, like equidistant from that center um, that you're, yeah, equidistant from the center. Um, and so why does this work? Well, the only way your opponent can place a coin um, anywhere on the table is if like both that side and like the, the equidistant mirrored uh, place is free. Since you, if you always stick to your strategy, um, these kind of coins will always come in pairs, right? All the coins placed will always come in pairs. So the only way your opponent can place a coin is if you haven't already placed it, placed your coin on the opposite opposite side of that coin. Um, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, this is a pretty beautiful and, and easy way to always win at this game. 
Okay, so for the fourth problem, you have 12 identical balls. Uh, one of the balls is heavier or lighter than the rest. Uh, you don't know which. And using a balance that can only show you which side of the tray is heavier, um, how can you determine which ball is defective and um, whether the defective ball is heavier or lighter with just three measurements? Uh, so have a think about it, and I'll give you the solution right away. Okay, so if you want to solve this problem, um, you might notice that uh, doing the intuitive thing, which is splitting the 12 balls into two groups of six and then weighing them against each other, uh, doesn't really give you any information. Uh, the reason being is that if you take six balls and put them on each side of the, um, the scale, well, if it tips to the right, is the right side heavier or the left side lighter? You don't know. Same thing with the left side. So that's probably not a good idea to split the balls into two groups. Uh, better way is to split the balls into three groups, uh, which is exactly what we're going to do. All right, so we've split up our 12 balls into three groups, uh, the blue group, the red group, and the green group, and we've labeled the balls one through four in each group. And so the first thing we're going to do is weigh the blue group against the red group. Uh, we can do any group of the balls, but yeah, let's just do blue group and the red group. Okay, so in the first weighing, we're weighing the four blue balls against the four red balls. And there's two scenarios that can happen. Uh, actually, there's three, but we're just going to consider two since you'll see that two of the cases are the same. So the first case is that the balance uh, is stable, so it doesn't uh, tip to the right or the left, um, which means that the weight of the blue balls and the red balls is equal, which also means that neither the blue balls nor the red balls are defective. All of the blue balls and all of the red balls are are up, up to code. <laughs> They're not, yeah. So which means that the defective ball must be in the green balls. Uh, the second scenario is that the scale tips to the left. Uh, obviously, there's also a third scenario where the scale tips to the right. But if you can imagine, it's going to be the exact same scenario um, as when the scale tips to the left, just with the colors re reversed. So we're just going to look at two, two cases. Okay, so in this case that the scale balances, uh, which means that uh, the blue balls and the red balls are of equal weight, um, and the defective ball must be in the green in the green balls. Um, let's take two green balls and measure it against a green ball and a red ball. Okay, so here we have two green balls on the right and uh, two, one green ball and one red ball on the left. And so here we have three scenarios that we have to uh, discuss. In one scenario, uh, they're equal, which, which just means that uh, the first, second, and third green ball are not defective, which automatically means that the fourth green ball is defective. Okay, so what happens if the scale tips to the right? Well, in this case, we already know that either one or two of green must be heavy or the third green ball must be light. So we can write this down as one, two, heavy or three, light, right? We already know this information. So to, to get the, the answer, we can just measure the Green, the green one and two ball against each other. And then from there, we can we can see how we can get the, the correct ball. All right, so as mentioned, we're gonna measure green ball number one and number two against each other. And for the three cases, we have that if they're equal, well, then we know that the third ball is light. Uh, so green three is light. Okay, uh, by the way, I forgot to say in this case with the number four, um, we actually don't know if four is light or heavy yet. Um, so we can just use it, you can just balance it against like a number three ball or a number one ball, um, just to see whether the scale tips to the left or to the right. And that's how we can see whether, uh, whether four is heavy or light, because um, we know that all the other balls are non defective. Um, so that'd be a good way to, to check that. Um, now, if the scale tips to the right, in this case, there we go. Um, well, then we know that one is heavy and two is normal. So this would just be uh, one heavy. Okay, and then by the same token, if uh, the left side is heavier, then two is heavy. Okay, now if up here, uh, the scale tips to the left, well, then again, we know that either three is heavy or one or two is light. So let's write that down. So we either know that three is heavy or one or two is light. Okay, now again, we can just take one or two um, and weigh them against each other. Okay, so here we again have three scenarios, uh, one where they're equal and then to where either side is, is heavier. And so if they're equal, we again know that three is heavy, uh, just like in the case before. And so if the scale tips to the right, we know that two is light. And if the scale tips to the left, we know that one is light. So let's try to tackle this left side of the branch. Um, well, actually, 
yeah, go all the way over here because we're going to need a lot of space. Um, and so for this one, let's try to weigh three balls, I guess three balls, and I'm going to tell you which, which balls to get exactly. Okay, so for this measurement, we're going to have one red ball, two blue balls on the left side, and one red ball, one blue ball, and one green ball on the right side. And so why is that? Well, again, we're going to consider three scenarios. In the first scenario, uh, the balance is just going to be equal. So it's, gonna, it's just going to balance. Um, and so what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that neither the first, the second, or the third blue ball is defective. And also, the first and the second red ball isn't defective. And since up here, we know that um, this the blue balls are heavier than the red balls, it means that either the fourth blue ball is heavier or the um, third or fourth red ball is lighter. Okay, so here we have that the fourth blue ball is heavy or that the third or fourth red ball is light. So here we can just measure the two red balls against each other, so three and four um, red against each other, and we'll have three scenarios. So in our three scenarios, the first one is that the three and four balance, which just means that um, four is heavy. So we can just say here that the fourth blue ball is heavy. And so if the right side is uh, heavier, um, then that just means that three is lighter. And then if the left side is heavier, um, then that just means that four is lighter. Okay, so back up here in the second scenario, um, we know that since the blue balls are heavier from our first measurement that we did, um, we know that either three blue is heavy or that one red is light. So this is just pretty simple. In this case, we can just measure the first red ball against any non-defective ball. So maybe uh, the first green ball. Okay, so here we actually only have two scenarios. Uh, one is where the red ball and the green ball are equal, in which case uh, the third blue ball is heavy. Or the second case is where um, the green ball is heavier than the red ball, uh, when, in which case the red ball is light. Okay, so we come to our last scenario, uh, which is when uh, one, two blue and one red is heavier than uh, two red, three blue and one green. And so in this case, we know that either uh, one or two blue is heavy or that two red is uh, light. Okay, so here again, we can do the same trick we did before where we um, take one blue and two blue, measure them against each other, and then do the same thing we've always done. And so if they're equal, we know that the second red ball is light. If uh, the blue two is heavier, um, then that just means that blue two is heavy. And then if uh, blue one is heavier, then that just means blue one is heavy. Okay, so this is the completed graph. Um, it'll show you what to do in every possible scenario. Um, so this is a pretty hard problem. If you got this far, then congratulations. I think it requires a lot of creativity and, and thinking on your feet. Um, but yeah. Okay, so thank you guys for watching and uh, following along in those four brain teasers. Um, I hope you liked it. If you enjoy this content, please consider giving this a thumbs up and subscribing. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time.